study the RAVE trial, which is what led to FDA approval here in the United States, patients with severe disease were randomized to either receive cyclophosphamide, azathioprine, or rituximab, which was given at the lymphoma dose of 375 milligrams per meter square per week for four weeks. Now, while this was given in patients who had severe disease, thereby justifying the use of cyclophosphamide, there were significant exclusions in terms of not enrolling the very sickest of the sick, so those who had a creatinine greater than four or who were on mechanical ventilation. At the primary endpoint, where which patients were in remission and off prednisone at six months, rituximab was found to be as effective as cyclophosphamide, and in patients who were enrolled at the time of a relapse, rituximab appeared to be slightly more effective. Of note was that the rate of adverse events was similar, again, I think reflecting some of the role of high-dose prednisone and also the fact that uh, cyclophosphamide toxicities can be longer term and our use as far as effective preventive strategies. But this study had a low rate of mortality. So this demonstrated that rituximab was as effective as cyclophosphamide and again was the basis for FDA approval. Now, the other study that was published uh, was the Rituxfash trial from Europe, and this had some important differences which shed additional light on this therapy. In this study, this was designed as a superiority trial in which the goal was to see whether rituximab was, in fact, more effective than cyclophosphamide. And um, the other thing in this design was that all patients received two doses of IV cyclophosphamide, following which they underwent the randomization. The other difference in this trial was that all patients were eligible to be enrolled regardless of the degree of disease severity. So in this study's primary endpoint,